Making a scrap yarn cake is a fun and creative way to use up leftover yarn while organizing your stash for future projects. You can make this as random or as planned out as you like, and here's a simple guide to get you started. Step one, gather your scraps and separate them into yarn weights and yarn types. As a general rule, you want to avoid mixing and matching. So for example, group all of your weight four yarns together and then make sure that they're all the same type of yarn, as in wool, cotton, or acrylic. This is because they each behave differently, especially when being washed. So for example, you don't really want to combine a wool that needs hand washing with an acrylic yarn that can go in the washer and dryer. Now you can combine the different brands of yarn that are the same type. For example, these are both 100% cotton weight four, but if you look closely, you'll see one is slightly thinner than the other. So there are going to be subtle differences and you can decide if that matters to you. If you don't know what weight your yarn is, you can measure it by wraps per inch, WPI. I have a video dedicated to that that you can check out here, as well as in the description box below the video. Now, if you're not sure what type of yarn you have, that can be a little bit more tricky. I do plan on doing a video about this in the future, but there's really not an exact science to it. It really does benefit you more to be as organized with that as you possibly can. Even if that means just wrapping some yarn around a yarn label and sticking it into a Ziploc bag, you're really going to thank yourself later. This is a good time to think about color combinations. Your eye is your best guide, but if you'd like some tips on color choices, here's a video that I think you'll enjoy. Step two is to decide how often you want to change colors. A good place to start is to think about the type of projects you'll be using it for. Will you most likely be working in rows or rounds? If you're working in rounds, then you'll want to use your smaller piles of yarn first and leave the larger ones for later. And if you're working in rows, then this is where you can focus on your larger piles. To really help out with this, I would recommend that you take the time to make a gauge swatch for yourself. This is where a tape measure and an inexpensive kitchen scale are your best friend. For example, I worked up a 12 inch row of double crochets, and that's because I know the majority of the time I like to work with double crochet stitches. I was able to weigh it to use it as a baseline to compare it to the piles of yarn that I had on hand. And I was also able to pull it back and measure how much yarn I was using per double crochet. So for example, with my yarn and hook, I know that it takes 12 inches of yarn to make three double crochets. I did the same thing with a granny square. I just did three rounds and discovered that I was using about five feet of yarn per round. This is really useful if I want to do something a little bit more controlled where the color changes are growing more incrementally. But in summary, to keep this super simple, if you don't have a particular project in mind, then just make sure your scraps are no shorter than 12 inches and a good average size would be about a yard of yarn, which is about the length of your arms outstretched. Now this is going to vary depending on the type of yarn and hook that you're using, so I recommend that you try working up a gauge swatch as well to find out what works best for you. And finally, it's time to join your strands together. My favorite way is the magic knot. This has never failed me. No matter how slippery soft the yarn is, I've always had great success with it. To make your magic knot, take your two strands of yarn and place them parallel to each other, but ends on opposite sides of each other. You're going to take this end and join it to this stretch of yarn and this end to this stretch of yarn. And you're just going to tie it just one simple tie and then on the other side same thing just one simple tie Nothing fancy with that tie, just like you're tying a shoelace. And pull those two ties together. And now I'm just going to trim the ends. And that's all there is to it. You can go ahead and dig your nail in there, test it out. Test it really well. And then move on. The more you do this, the faster you're going to get. You won't even need to place it on the table to get your bearings. You'll just have it in your hand. You'll start with one side. So I did the blue to the orange. And then I'll take and repeat the process. Now I'm going to take the orange to the blue. Pull 
fold together, snip and move on. But for whatever reason, if you do not like working with knots, you feel like it's going to come out or you're afraid it's going to be too visible, then you can do what I call it just a twist and go. And I have a video all about it that I'll go ahead and place here. The twist and go just means that you're going to take your two ends of yarn and then just wrap them around each other and make sure that you have about six inches on each side, just to make sure that you have plenty of that tail worked into the stitches as you make your project. And now it's time to just choose your favorite method of winding yarn and create a tapestry of colors for your next project. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, a like is always appreciated. Be sure to check out the description box below for all the different links to the things that I mentioned in the video. You can also find the link to the pattern for the square that you see here as well. This is just a classic sunburst granny square with the first three rounds made with the scrap cake. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.